Woohoo! Keep on going. Try and turn, lean a bit. All right, guys, we're going to test in the hot tub here some different thrusts and different props, see where we're at, and uh, we'll get back to you with the results. Hold on a sec. Here we are. Okay guys, so we tested three different props in the hot tub and we got the thrust from them. Gave us a lot of information. Unfortunately, we were having some problems with our amp and our current meter, and uh, so we couldn't get exactly everything we wanted, but we got the gist of what was going on. We know what we need to do, and uh, we get to move forward here. So let me show you quickly what we, we did. Now, more or less, we tested three different props. The 110 with a four blade, very low pitch. We also did a 80 millimeter uh, ducted prop with a high pitch, and we did a low, uh, low pitch 80 millimeter as well. Now, the results here, we were using the 500, the SSS 500 kV motor, which has relatively low torque uh, for going direct drive. Uh, we've got a different motor that we're looking at, actually a couple different motors that have a lot more torque, about 47% uh, more torque, and it'll definitely make a huge difference because what we found was this little guy over here with the low pitch, it, uh, it seemed to spin at a much higher RPM and just didn't have a whole lot of thrust. It was 15 kilograms of thrust, not enough for what we need. I think that one was pretty much maxing out. Uh, over here, the 110 and the 80, they both had the exact same thrust, 20 kilograms just over of thrust for both of those. And what we found was uh, it seemed like the bigger one here was turning slower just because there's a lot more to it. But uh, a bigger prop is a little more efficient when it comes to thrust. So it was giving us a lot of thrust, but the motor didn't have the torque to push anymore. And that's why I think they, they both had the same torque. Uh, simply uh, this one here spun a little bit faster, uh, has a higher pitch, and it gave the same thrust, but the motor just couldn't turn them fast enough to give them the full RPM. So we should have been turning about 12,500 RPM, somewhere in that range. Instead, I think they were turning much slower, uh, maybe 5,000 or so, maybe uh, 6,000 with this little guy. You could tell by the feel and the sound of it. Um, versus this other one here is turning much faster. So we need a motor that can actually turn these direct drive with more torque and that's what uh, we're gonna be doing. Now overall, uh, we are moving on to a couple different things here. We have this amp meter originally, uh, kind of junky just because uh, one thing, you can't read the amp. The blue one in daylight, you cannot read it. You have no idea what you're running. You can't see it when you're riding. On top of it, for some reason it stopped working. It shorted out. Uh, it didn't short out, but it's, it was started to blink, and when it blinks, it was just giving us uh, a reading we couldn't read by the time it would try to it would blink again. You just couldn't get it. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and we've ordered the Eagle Tree V-Logger system. This is a direct uh, way to measure the actual uh, current. So we can measure the actual amps and the volts without a shunt, meaning this is an inline system. It is very accurate. And we'll be able to not only see what we're what we're riding with when we're up and riding, but we can track it. It's fully recorded. And on top of that, the other thing we got here was the brushless motor RPM sensor that plugs into it, so we can track that as well. So we'll know how fast the RPMs are in the current that it draws, and uh, and that would be a huge help because we didn't know what these were turning. They weren't turning enough to give us the thrust, um, and if, if we knew that, it would make a huge difference. Uh, last but not least is we've got the GPS uh, module as well, so we can track not only the current and the RPMs, but also the speed. So we can graph and chart everything going forward and really be able to test different props. We can 3D uh, print different props and pitches and designs that can fit in these housings and do a lot of testing once we get all the rest of the parts that we need in and really hone in on a very streamlined system. Now also we 
have gone with a new uh, controller. We're going with an Alienware. If you take a look, you can see the Alienware Sport 2 350 amp uh, uh, ESC. Now this one is uh, very thin. It's only about 15 millimeters uh, uh, thick. A little, little wider, a little longer, simply because the way it's designed with 32 uh, MOSFETs, it's designed to run a high current, very low temperature, and with all the MOSFETs you get a lot of performance and power out of it. And that's the one thing we want, is a cool running system that we don't have to worry about our currents ever causing any issues. What we're drawing with our, ours will never really push this thing to a limit. This thing will run uh, cool and in safe zones very easily. And on top of that, it's got a bunch of great features. Uh, the main ones that I really like about it are the throttle control. We can we can have soft starts, extra soft starts. We can have a hard start depending on your feel and how sensitive you want things to go. We've got um, linear and exponential different curves for when you pull the trigger it will respond in a little bit different uh, in different way to fit your style. And of course it's got this auto cutoff feature as well so that if for some reason your controller breaks or shorts out or you fall off and the trigger's stuck down or something the ESC will automatically shut down and um, uh, kick the motor off. So that's, uh, that's uh, another part we're going to be waiting for, but we're getting closer to um, uh, being able to start the, the second build here going forward. On top of that, we got a couple other parts. We got a waterproof um, 150 amp inline breaker. This uh, feels like very good quality, it's very heavy. It's got uh, the reset button. This we can mount inside the battery box so that if for some reason something starts to short out and there's a huge spike in energy, instead of a fire, this will just cut out and, uh, and kill the power right away and save more or less hopefully the batteries and our ESC and anything else that is in the box. So on top of that we got a few other little things. We got some couplers that we need. Um, we got a water, water jet to come out of the ESC box so we can pump water out and it's got a waterproof seal. And we've got this other little water uh, pickup here that we could potentially try setting right inside this black housing where we can cut a notch, we can have it so it sits flush right inside and uh, it'll actually go this way. And as the water's turning, this will be sitting flush, uh, picking up water pressure and we can feed it all the way back to our ESC and cool the system with high pressure, lots of water running through our ESC. So that's where we're at. We're waiting on some parts. We're about to order uh, a couple different motors. We are also going to be trying a little uh, jet uh, um, a jet drive as well, a 60 millimeter jet drive. So that's kind of what we're working on and uh, we'll talk to you in a little bit.